Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to do an airplane setup on the RadioMaster TX16S. As you can imagine, there's a lot of capability in this radio and a lot of questions too because OpenTX is a very comprehensive software platform that runs the radio. With that said, I'd like to offer a series of videos on configuring the TX16S specifically and OpenTX in general. Today I'd like to start with how to set up an airplane and some of the ancillary things around an airplane setup that will be useful to know like managing the home screen options that are available in a given model. So let's jump right into it. We're going to turn it on, go through the little splash screen, and you'll see that we start on the model information page. Before I start the model setup, I just want to talk really quickly about the buttons because while there are a whole lot of videos out there on YouTube on using the TX16S, one thing that was obvious to me is the, the buttons, while they're obviously present, and when you have the radio, you can read these things, but the videos never show what these buttons do. This is the system button and this brings you into radio settings in general for the radio. I'm not going to cover that today, that'll be another video, but that's what that button's for. The model button lets you gain access to the model setup for the model that you currently have selected. This is a jog wheel or a scroll wheel that you can press to select different items as you navigate the system. And here on the left hand side they're labeled but there's no contrast there's no contrasting color so you've got on the top is a return or back button it's kind of like escape and then this button is the page right or page down this is page left or page up this last button says t-e-l-e -E, which i think stands for telemetry but it also lets you configure the different home screens when you're in a model so i'll cover that briefly near the end of the video for now let's go ahead and set up a model we'll do that by pressing the jog wheel and clicking on model select. That seems a little counterintuitive, but that's the way you get where you want to be. So you hit model select and before I go into configuration, one thing I definitely want to point out is in the current revision of OpenTX, they created airplane categories. So you can see I've got balsa, jets, sport, warbirds, wings, and FPV. And the way you navigate through those categories is with the page buttons. So if I hit page right, you can see the cursor will go from sport to warbirds to wings, FPV, and back up to the top to balsa, jets, and sport. Now, the thing that's really cool about that is when I used oh, to, <laughs> I was kind of ahead of my time because I used to use the same type of idea on my Tyrannus, but I gave up a model slot for the category and I grouped them all by myself. So I was actually, kind of way ahead of that one, but I'm really happy to see they enabled that in the radio. And you can also create categories and move models among the categories. That's all possible in the software as well. But for now, let's focus on creating a new model. So as you can see, the Millennium Master there has got a check mark. That means that's the model that's currently selected. So to create a new model, I'm going to press the jog wheel and hit create model. Now, there are a couple of different ways in OpenTX that allow you to create a model. One is through a wizard, and then you can have the radio just create a model. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use the wizard, because I think it's actually very cool. And if you're new to the radio, you might find this very helpful getting your initial setup uh, worked out. So I've selected plane. You can see there's a black highlight box that moves back and forth. I've selected plane, and I'll hit the jog wheel. And now I'm going to be asked a series of questions. You can see I can use the jog wheel to move this cursor up and down. And then when I see something I want to inter interact with, I'll press the button. So this question, does your model have a motor? I'm going to press the jog wheel. And, it, and you can see the yes is blinking now. And I can change with the jog wheel from yes to no. So I'm going to leave mine at yes. And then in my radio, I've always used the setup AETR, which is aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder and that's channels one, two, three, and four. So for me, throttle is always channel three. The cool thing about OpenTX is you can set your channels however you want. The radio really doesn't care. So with that selected, uh, yes, I have a motor. Yes, it's on channel three. I'm gonna hit the page button and move to the next screen. 
how many ailerons are on your model? Well, I don't know of any airplanes that have one. Maybe they exist. I don't know of any. But I think what they're really asking here is, is how are your ailerons configured? So the default example says I've got two ailerons, one on channel one and one on channel five. So that's a dual aileron channel setup. That might be useful if you want to do things like spoilerons or flaps. If you don't have dedicated flaps on a plane, that's where you'd use something like that. Or if you want to have things like differential control. But for most of us, on a four channel setup, let's just select the number of ailerons and move the wheel to say, to look at the other options. One option is none, which would be a three channel setup. So for a four channel setup, you'd say one or two with a Y cable. So two ailerons with a Y cable. I'm going to use that one. Now I'll hit page again. Does your model have flaps? If you said yes here, again, you can say I have one channel or two channels, and it gives you control over which channels you use. In this example, I'm just going to say no. And then the next page, it asks about the tail configuration. And this is the traditional format where, again, I have aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. So my elevator is two, my rudder is four. And that's where they have this one, aileron, sorry, elevator on channel two and rudder on channel four. The other options are two channels for the elevator, one for the rudder. I did that on the smooth. On the smooth, I've got two, eight, two elevator servos, one on each side. So I'd have, in this case, I'd have channel two for the one elevator half and channel six for the other elevator half. And then the other option is V-tail. So this will set up your mixing for you if you have a V-tail or a delta wing. So let's just use one channel for elevator and one for rudder. And then I'll hit page down. And now it says, do you need to make any changes? If I click on the button down here, it'll highlight this, no, I need to change something. And I'm going to select it to, I'm going to select yes, all is well, create the plane. So when I do that, model successfully created, press return to exit. So now you can see I've got model 45 there, and it's selected. So now we'll hit return to get back to the model main screen. And this is where we'll start working on the specifics of our model. I'm going to click the model button. And the first thing that I have is an option to change the name. And we'll just put in something nonsense, uh, just so you can see how to do it. If you need to switch between small letters and caps, you just long press. So there's a little E. I'm going to long press that and change it to a big E. Then when you're done, you hit return. Model image, real nice. You can go in here. I'll pick my Millennium Master as an image for timers. If you want to set a timer, you press the button, and you can choose the device or source to activate the timer. In this case, I'll just set it for throttle stick. And we'll set a timer for, we'll set a timer for, I don't know, five minutes. So what this says is that when the throttle stick is active, that timer will start counting off. And you can give it a name, too. I like to call my timer one the flight timer. You can name it whatever you want, though. OK, persistent, what that means is it's more for a count up feature. So if you set it to persistence, what will happen is I use it to accrue time on a total flight timer. For a normal flight timer, you're not going to want to set that to be persistent. If you want a per minute notification of your timer, you can turn that on. And then for countdown, you have options for silent. You can have it start beeping after 10 se with 10 seconds left or a voice countdown with 10 seconds left. Then you can also set up timer two and timer three. One thing I like to do on timer two is set a cumulative timer. And in that case, I do set persistence to be on. And that's how I know how much time I put on a given airframe. And then there's an option, actually, for a third timer if you want to use it. Extended trims and limits, those have to do with servo travel. So if you want your servo to go past the 100% weight, you can turn that on for a given model. Display trims, I like to say yes to that. I want to see the trims in the model screen. And then trim step. Here's a, here's a really neat little setup tip I'll give you. Under trim step, what I do when I'm mating an airplane is I'll set it to medium. And then when I'm done, I'll copy my trims to sub trims, and I'll come back in here and set it to fine. And what that does is it gives the option, when you set the trim step to medium, every movement of the trim switch will set a certain amount of deflection. So on medium, they're a little bit there's a little bit more of a degree spacing between each click of the button. When you set it to fine, every step gets much smaller. 
So it's important when you're first setting it up to make sure you have enough trim to be able to get it where you want. But then when you fine tune the plane, I set it to fine after copying my trims, trims to sub trims. Throttle, if you want to reverse it, you can do that here. I don't, I don't really like that. I want the throttle always to work the way I think it's supposed to work. I guess for maybe a dual motor setup, you might want to do something like that. And then you can change the source, but um, that's beyond really the scope of this video. A couple of other options down here around displaying a checklist. So when I had very complicated airplanes for flying long range FPV, I would make a text-based checklist and put it in the model folder with the model name. And then every time I'd turn on the model, I the checklist would be displayed. And it'd let me check to make sure my cameras were on, my ground tracker was on, my computer was functioning correctly and set up correctly. So if you have a complicated airplane, you can turn that on if you want to display a checklist. For switch positions, I turn most of these off. I don't like my radio complaining every time I turn it on. The two main things I'll do is if I have high rates or low rates, like on my smooth, I want to take off on low rates with that one, so I'll always set that to be on. And then if I have a flight computer, which I normally set up on channel C, I'll set that to be off I don't or down. I want the flight computer off when I first start flying. Everything else except the motor cutoff, I turn off. And then for the motor cutoff, we want that to always be a warning if it's not set to on. So that's how you set those. And then if you want to do your pots and sliders, you can also set warnings for pots and sliders. I'll just show you what it looks like. You've got S1, the sixth position, S2, and so on. So I'm going to leave mine off. I don't like pots warning me. And then center beep, what that does is I turn that on for my throttle. That's how I know if I'm at 50%. I get an audible tone when I'm at 50%. So I turn throttle on and listen. So every time you hit 50% on the throttle, it beeps. So I like that for my throttle. Use global functions, I recommend leaving that on. I will post a separate video showing you some really cool things you can do with global functions. That's outside of the scope of today's video, but stand by, it's coming. And then internal RF, this is the real gold in this radio. So when I turn this on, I'm gonna turn it on multi, and you can see that I've got options to select different protocols here, like fly sky, fly zone, first ski, first ski D17, D16, and so on. So those are how you select the module that you want to use. I wonder what the other options are. There aren't any. It's just multi. So again, when you select this, you can pick the different protocol you want to use. And then the bind option and range check options are down here as well. There's a couple of little odd ones in here. I'll look them up in post and, and see if I can figure out what they stand, what they mean. I don't know what they what these do. RF frequency fine tune, not sure about that. Bind on channel, not sure about that. That might have something to do with different receivers that I'm just not familiar with. And then disable telemetry and low power mode. I'm not sure what all those things do. So I'll look and see if I can dig that out and I'll put text in the video when I post the video. All right, fail safe mode. If you want to set custom pulses, you can sit, set custom and then go into set. And then you can move your controls where you want them. Let's say, let's just say for example, I want my throttle to be at 100% and my elevator to be full back. Once I've selected that with my controls, you'll hit this channels to fail safe down here and long press that. And you'll see that the red indicates what the receiver will do to the servo outputs if it loses communication with the radio. So in my case, my elevator will come all the way back and my throttle will go all the way up. So <laughs> this would just sit there and loop. <laughs> but if you don't want to do that, if you want to reset that, you can always go back in here under channels to fail safe, long press, and everything will back, go back to normal. So that's how you set fail safe. And there are a couple of other modes too, like you can do no pulses, which means the receiver will stop sending any information to the servos. And then there's an option to set the receiver for fail safe as well. So you can have receiver control the fail safe pulses. That might be useful in something like a flight computer where you'd say, hey, come home for example. Uh, another option is hold, which means wherever the controls were when you lost control, that's where they'll stay. That could be dangerous though. I'm not sure about that. Or you can say not set, but if you do not set, you're going to get issues. It'll warn you every time you turn the radio on. So I'll leave mine at custom. External RF, if you have an external radio module, you can turn that on here. And then for mode, if you want your radio to be the master or slave, you can set that down here at the bottom under trainer. 
Okay, now we'll hit page and you can see just like a web browser that's got tabs, we're gonna move through these different tabs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna toggle through all of them really quickly and then we'll go through them in a little bit of detail. So the next tab has to do with flight modes, then your inputs where you set rates, the mixes where you can get granular control on what's going on with each channel. Your outputs let you control reversing and this is also where your sub trims go. Curves outside the scope of the video, but if you wanna set things like flap, intermediate and takeoff, you can do that with curves in, in the radio. But that is outside the scope of today's conversation. Global variables also outside the scope of the conversation today. Logical switches, I can't even tell you how many cool things you can do with logical switches. They're literally, your imagination is the limit. Special functions, I'll do one special function so you get an idea of what these are useful for. So let's highlight special function and I'm gonna say I want for my throttle kill to be down, or my H SH switch to be down, I'm going to override channel 3, and that will be set to negative 100, which is off. And then don't forget to put a check mark in the box in the end, that turns it on. So what that means is that when I have my SH switch to the down position, it overrides whatever the throttle stick says, and it turns the throttle off. So that's a throttle kill, essentially. All right, the next page is custom Lua scripts, also outside the scope of today's conversation, and then telemetry. If you wanna add sensors or discover sensors, you can do that here. All right, so let's go in and talk a little bit about flight modes and rates. I wanna, I wanna spend a little bit of time on that. Okay, one of the very cool features about the TX-16S is that it's got a six mode switch up top. Those little airplanes are mode switches, and those are designed to set flight modes, which is very handy when you're using flight computers like ArduPilot or Vector or ArcBird or any of those that have multiple flight mode options. So a six mode switch is very cool to have and you can configure these buttons to work and set the various flight modes. I'm not gonna cover that in today's video, but I did wanna point out that it does have a very nice six mode option for specifically designed for flight computers. Okay, rates. I'm gonna just do a quick little example to show you a high and low rate. Um, and I'll do it on aileron. So you can see I've got aileron set to 100% of throw. So what I'm gonna do is long press the button and hit insert after. And when you, I hit return and go back, you can see now I have two aileron options. With those two aileron options, I'm gonna set one to be my high rate and one to be my low rate. So I'm gonna click on this one, the top one, and I'm gonna leave the weight at 100. But let's edit that and I'm gonna assign a switch to it. I like to use, for my rates, I use my SB switch. So I set my SB to up, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little expo just so you can see what it looks like under high rates with expo. We'll set it at 50%. Okay, so now you can see SB is up, it's bold, and I have 100% weight and 50% expo. Okay, now I'm going to be looking at the low rates, and what I'll do for that, because it's a three position switch, I want it to be when I have SB up, I want that to be high, and I want anything else to be low. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna go in and edit this one, and I'm gonna set the low rate to be something lower. We'll just set it at oh, 35 with an expo of 10. And for the switch, I'm gonna set it to be I'm gonna set the switch to be not SB up. So now what'll happen is when SB is in the up position, I have the high rate selected. When SB is not in the up position, I'll have the middle rate. Low rate. My radio is saying low rates, that's a different, ignore the audible, ignore the audible prompts, don't worry about that. I have that set up with global functions. So every model I have, it automatically sets my auto audio prompts for high, medium, and low rates. So you can ignore those. But what I'm trying to show you here is that when SB is down, it's on the low rate. When it's in the middle, it's also in the low rate. And when it's high, it's in the high rate. So that's how you set up dual rates or triple rates if you want them on the radio. And by the way, you can set up different ones, different switches for different control surfaces like throttle, rudder, and so on. Okay, next page under mixes, let's go into aileron and take a look. You can set your source, your weight. Here's an example I'm using weight. If I go in here and set the weight 
to say 95%. What that means is that the servo pulses that are sent to the receiver will only go 95%, never to 100. Now, when it comes to high rates and low rates, the high rate and low rate is based off of the mixer value. So if I'm only sending 95% in the mixer, that means the high rate at 100% will only be 95%. The low rate at 30% will be 30% of 95%. I hope that makes sense, but that's what it does. You can also set an offset. So an offset allows you to say uh, you want the servo to be positioned here or here instead of straight. It allows you to kind of move move where the starting point of the servo is for trim purposes. Whether or not you want the surface to be trimmable. And then you can set curves, differential, expo, and a couple of other custom things like curve. If you want a curve here, you can do that in this, in this area. I don't want any of that, so I'm just going to leave that. Uh, I'll leave it set at Expo. You can also assign a switch to activate this control or this mix with a switch. And that's how you do things like rudder mixing with ailerons for, say, a Piper Cub. Or if you wanted to do an elevator mix for a knife edge, you, you do stuff like that in here. You can add a switch and then create a mix that does activates this arrangement. And then you can also do delay up and down. Think about things like gear or flaps. And you can also slow the servo movement here with slow up and slow down. Outputs, I'm going to cover, I want to cover this real quick because I think this is another area that I know a lot of people are not familiar with. So I'm going to exit out to the main screen and I'm going to, sh we're just going to do a, a real obvious example. I'm going to set the elevator trim all. I don't want the radio to stop talking to me. I'm going to set the elevator trim all the way down to the bottom, OK? Now when I go into the output screen, you can see the elevator, which is channel number two, has zero for the trim value. So when I, what you do is scroll, the, you scroll to the left, which goes to the bottom of the screen, and click Trims to Subtrims, and watch what happens. When I, when I click this button, what's going to happen is my elevator trim is going to get copied to my subtrim, and then the elevator trim itself on the main screen will be reset to zero. So I'm going to press and hold this. There we go. Now I'm going to hit return, and you can see that my elevator trim is now negative 24.2. When I go back to the model screen, my elevator trim has been re-zeroed. So that's how you use subtrims. And if you don't like that, you can always highlight that channel, click the button, and hit reset. Okay, when it comes to curves, the primary use I found for curves is setting up things like flaps. So I'll set a curve up where it never goes below zero, but it can go up to 100. And these curves do allow setting up to 17 points, which I think is really very granular. I mean, if you need that much information, great, but that's a, that's a lot of curve points to, to have on a, on a curve. So again, a little bit outside the scope of this video to do uh, a lot of detail on these advanced features, but there you go. That's how you set a curve. And if you do set a curve, like, like say you set a curve, and I'm going to call this, uh, we'll call it curve C, okay? Now, when I, the way in your mix, the way you use that curve is I can go into this control surface and say, I want to use curve custom, and I'm going to pick curve C. So that applies that curve to this input. Okay, global variables, not going to cover that today. Logical switches, again, not going to cover that today. Too much to go on there. And then special functions, we did that. All right, the last thing I want to cover on the model setup, because it's very germane to setting up a model, is these home screens. And the way you configure these home screens, think again like browser tabs. You know how you can go page to page to page in your browser? Same kind of concept. So you get into the screen setup by hitting, and by the way, I want to point out, I've got an indicator for my sliders. That's, that's over here on the left. My potentiometer right here. The potentiometer number two right here. And the right slider is right here. And then these indicators are for trim. Trim for elevator, aileron, rudder, and throttle if you use throttle. Okay, so now let's go in and set up some screens. You can see up top I've got icons that indicate screen one, an add, 
and then the top bar. So let's go ahead and add a screen first. So I'm going to click the right page button. It says add main view. I'm going to click the, the wheel for that. Now you can see that I've got a second screen added that I can go in and configure. So on the top row, it's kind of a little bit kludgy to see it, but on the top row you can see I've got the layout highlighted. And let's do a dual pane layout. So I'm going to click the button, scroll over here to dual pane, and hit return. And then I'm going to go in and set up widgets. In the left pane, I'm going to add outputs. And in the right pane, I'm going to add uh, my flight timer. The main screen I didn't change, but what I did is I added a second screen, and you can get to that by hitting this page button. So now that I've hit the page button, you can see I've got an output screen that shows me the output of my channels, which is really very handy if you like to monitor things like that. Okay, let's go back to the primary screen that I have set up, and we're going to configure that a little bit. Okay, for the main screen setup, you have options to set up widgets, and I'll get into that in just a second. Um, you can decide whether or not you want to see a top bar, what your flight mode is, whether or not you want to see the sliders or the trims. So I'm going to turn flight mode off, I'm going to turn sliders off, I'm going to leave my top bar on, and I'm going to go in and set up my widgets. So on the widgets, on the right hand side, I've got a picture of my plane, which I kind of like that. And then in this pane, I'm going to set, um, I don't know, let's do, uh, let's, do, let's do a battery, let's do the battery. All right, battery, I'm going to select the source as, we'll go all the way to the bottom and select battery. Sure, we'll put a shadow in there. And, ah, that color is white. That doesn't, that do, I don't like that. Let's set the color to be black. Maybe a bright blue. That'd be good. Okay, so there's my battery voltage, and that's the battery inside the transmitter, not in the airplane. And then for the bottom one, let's go ahead and set a flight timer. And there we go. So now I've got my flight timer set up. I'm going to reset my timer. I'm going to turn my throttle on, turn the throttle up, and there we go. There goes my flight timer counting down. All right, guys, that pretty much covers what I wanted to show you today on how to set up a model on OpenTX on the TX16S. I hope this information has been useful to you, and if it has, I would definitely appreciate your subscription. Thanks for checking out the channel, and if you're a regular, keep commenting, thumbs up, thumbs down, you know the drill. I appreciate your interaction with you guys. Hope you have a good one. Take it easy.